North Beach just wouldn't be North Beach without Enrico Banducci. His succession of restaurants and clubs for many years now have been the gathering place for the stars and the stars to be. His nightclubs and Enrico himself have become San Francisco landmarks. And so, to Enrico's own sidewalk cafe, to hear this man in the black beret tell us some of his terrific stories about himself and the famous people he has known. I was a skippy peanut butter salesman from Athlete Sales, food, food uh, brokers, yeah. Oh, and from, from skippy peanut butter, you came to the San, I came back to San Francisco in 1948. 1949, I opened a restaurant called Enrico's on Bush Street. It lasted six months. And if I could just take a minute to tell you the story, it was very funny. I knew nothing about business, and I was cooking and doing the dishwashing and doing the service. And I was full, and I had a couple of waiters, and a, a very good friend of mine who was an economist, Freddie Breyer, who was the... I think he was a doctorate of economy at San Francisco State. He was a very good friend of mine. I remember I met him when he was going to Berkeley. Came in one day, and he, he's Viennese. Saw all these people, and he hadn't seen me for a while. He says, Enrico, all of this business, you must be doing terrific. And I says, well, I don't know. I don't seem to be able to pay my bills, and I'm working. He says, where are your books? I'm an economist. I said, downstairs. So he went downstairs. He came up in about four hours. I'd forgotten he was there. Came up, he says, Enrico, his tie was askew. I mean, his shirt was open. He says, close the place, close the, give everybody $2. Tell them to eat someplace else. You only lose a dollar instead of three. <laughs> I said, you're losing. I did. Sheriff closed it. <laughs> oh, no. And then I started The Hungry Eye in 1949. In addition to The Hungry Eye, Enrico also discovered a lot of people at the Purple Onion, just a few blocks from Enrico's cafe. This club here discovered a lot of talent. They, they introduced a lot of talent. Like the Purple Onion here, for instance, presented, uh, like a lot of people think that the uh, Kingston Trio started the Hungry Eye, and they didn't. They started here. And the Purple and Onion. And they had, this. see, the first one was, well, here it is right here. Phyllis oh, Diller, Kingston, Kingston Trio, Trio Rod McEwen, McEwen, Jim Neighbors, neighbors Mothers, Mothers, I knew yeah, that. Ronnie Shell, great. Yeah. His mother's brothers used to always come down and want to play the Eye. And I used to say, next week, kid, next week. Johnny Mathis played for me. I think one of his first engagements was at the Hungry Eye. Uh, from Washington High School, and I remember I, I canceled him out. And he said, oh, why, Mr. B? I'm doing very good. I says, no, I, I just don't feel you're ever going to make it, and it, I don't like the way you reach for those notes. You make funny faces, and people are upset. So you better go back to work in the gas station. You'll never make it. Well, you made it, Well, quote, unquote. I made You had a honey. drive. Oh, well, it was uh, sort of uh, misleading with me. I mean, I had sort of two things going. I wanted to be a concert violinist, and all the time I owned the club, I never played my violin, or I never told anybody I was a violinist. Well, you're gonna have to play for that. Oh, no, you Come don't on, hear me Come on, let's go play. back. But you really thought that it would be your career? Oh, I thought I was gonna be the world's greatest violinist. Who was Fritz Kreisler? Nothing. Hi, Fritz. Yeah, it's nothing. Menuhin? <laughs> Second. <laughs> Enrico is, above all, a performer, and you can always count on him for a never-ending supply of stories about other performers he has given starts to in show business. Oh, Barbara Streisand, yeah, she, uh, I met her in New York in 19, I was going to Europe for my first trip, and I went to the agent's office and I saw Barbara. I didn't know it was Barbara, she was standing in the doorway in a moo moo with tennis shoes, and I'm talking to the agent like this in my back to her, and I hear this voice, Erwin, is this the joy who owns the hungry eye? And I turned around, it was her, she says, are you Banducci? And I said, yeah, she says, you're idiots. Why don't you hire me? I'm gonna be a big star someday. I said, oh, you are? And I said, uh, Irvin, he's on the phone. He said, look, I'm busy. Barbara, I'm busy. I'm trying to sell Mr. Banducci talent. Will you get out of my office? <laughs> it's true. And she came over and says, come over, sit down and talk to me. So she talked to me while he says, he's always on the phone, Our, you know, agents, phone in each ear. And he's talking to Milwaukee. Yeah, I got him for you for 500. Wait a minute, you can have him for eight. You know, he's talking to the same group, but selling them double. And, uh, so I'm talking to Barbara, and she says, why don't you hire me? I'm going to be a big star someday, and I'm really great. And I says, what do you do? She says, I sing, and I'm a 
pretty good singer. She says, I'm not that good. I said, well, why are you singing? Why don't you take up acting? She said, nobody will ever recognize me acting. She says, if I go and singing first, a lot of people will see me, and then I'm going to be an actress, and I'll forget about the singing. I said, but you're a pretty good singer. She says, oh, I'm fair. I sing pretty good. She says, I sing with a lot of emotion, you know. And she went on, and she went on. And so the, finally, the agent puts the phones down, and I says, hey, Irwin, I said, uh, write up a contract for this lady. Make it $200 a week. I pay transportation. He said, you schmuck. You haven't even heard her sing yet. I said, she sings? Make it 250. <laughs> and so he wrote the contract. She says, come on, Arthur, write it up, write it up, write it up. <laughs> so he wrote it up for 250 a week. See the <laughs> book. Now, I understand from one of our producers in, in our station that you personally make every single pasta that comes out of your cafe. Is that true? I make the beef stew. There's some there now. They're selling for lunch. And, uh, I do some of the pastas and I do some of the cooking, yeah. I'm still involved. I like to cook. Every day I like to cook. Like right now, I'm hardly wait so we can end this show so I can go in and do. And I found the secret out and here is something for you ladies, really, in cooking. You know how the Japanese make that wonderful fuzzy dough that is around the, the tempura and it yeah, just sort of right. whisks away? Well, I found out what they do now. It's egg, no water, no milk, flour, and beer. Makes it fuzzy. Not it. It starts to act like it, and then all at once it flops. Well, Enrico, it's still good to me. There you go. Back to the drawing board? Let's do it. <laughs> all right. She had burned us. I think the oil was too hot. Too hot. Well, it's only here in North Beach at a place like Enrico's Sidewalk Cafe, one of the few in town where you can come and listen to the colorful stories Enrico will surely tell you, or simply sit and gaze at the famous, the infamous, the as yet undiscovered, or simply watch people watching other people. But don't go away. I'll be back with good ideas in just a moment. <laughs>